really, it really grows out of our ecclesiology, the doctrine of the church, that the, the, as it's revealed in the New Testament, that the church of Jesus established is a local, visible, autonomous body of believers. And when you read through your Bible, you see the church after church after church after church after. So uh, it is a, an autonomous body, and every church is a body of Christ, and every church has received full permission to evangelize, baptize, and teach, and also to reach the world. And um, so we begin to see that uh, Acts 1a really is an outline of the book of Acts. Uh, that, you know, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be witnesses underneath Jerusalem. So you got a little circle there, Judea, a little bit of circle, Samaria, a bigger circle, right? And then the uttermost. And so when you follow the Acts, that's what you have. This church has been committed. They were networked with churches all the way around the world to teaming together and doing the mission work, not out of a board or convention. Uh, not that we're mad about all that at all. We're thankful that Christ is preached. But that uh, it's biblical missions, really. And it works because out of this church, which is a little over, was about 85 plus years old, 65 or so churches have been established out of this church, planted churches around the world. And so this church always has, um, we support missionaries, 60 some odd out of other churches, but we always have our own. We have what we call sponsor. And so they are members of our church. And uh, we're sent out by our authority, and we receive offerings from them, for them, have accounts for them. They're ours. Um, if they have special needs, uh, then we, we try to help them. And of course other churches do. Uh, we uh, send out uh, mission reports every month, month or bi-monthly, no later than quarterly. And so this is, uh, God has blessed Rogers. A big part of our history of present work is in missions. We have our, of course, our missions conference in the summer. And that's not a closed conference in that we, you know, just for our church. No, we, it's, we have our arms extended, open, and we invite churches, missionaries, pastors, you know, from all around the country, and it's a network kind of conference because that's how we have to do it. We get missionaries and pastors together. Brother Jason Samantha has been uh, our missionary to the Philippines for a long, long time. And he and Priscilla and their family have been so, so faithful. And they have planted churches in the Philippines. I have been in the Philippines because of our missions. I've traveled quite a bit, but it's always through this church, and it's always related to the missions. Everywhere I travel, we're either organize a church, or visiting missionaries, or whatever. And so, uh, I've been to Philippines a couple of times. This is the third time. Now, this whole trip uh, began, you know, Joanne, uh, the, the family, the Samantha's were here. We brought them here in 2015. I, I'll never forget when we when we organized one of the churches, one of the last churches, it might have been, I think it was, it might have been Maranatha. Uh, I said, well, Brother Jason, where are you going now? thinking that he would just do what he'd always done, and that start another church in the Philippines. And he says, Brother well, Ron, I feel like the Holy Spirit is leading me to another country. Now, that's huge because as independent Baptists, we, you know, what we say, we, we grew up in this church, uh, the, the, the textbook of the church is the Bible, right? Yeah. The head of the church is Christ himself. The headquarters, well, that's in heaven. The administrator, well, that would be the Holy Spirit. And there's no one better than God himself through his Holy Spirit moving upon the heart. If you look at the 16th chapter of Acts, you see Paul wanting to go to Asia, right? And yet God would not let him have peace to do that. <coughs> no, I want you to go this way. Go to, go to to, to Europe, go this way. And so off he went. And then, you know, ultimately the gospel to the shores of America. 
But it was the Holy Spirit who directed that. So I prayed with Jason, and uh, he told me I want to go to Thailand. So he has been there a long time. I, as his pastor, have, have, uh, have had yet to visit him. And you must understand the way we do missions that uh, with, you know when I have, we have missionaries wherever they are that in time I go to the field. Now we brought Jason and his family here in 2015 and that was wonderful but it's not the same. And so I have this on my mind. I want wanted, I wanted to get Jason to get established. I want him to be able to wade into the language. You got to understand and this is something I got in the overview of this trip, and that is I've never left the Philippines and gone to another place than back home. Well, we went to Thailand and Florida, and it, it just gave me a whole new perspective about the Philippines. Number one, uh, the Philippines is a Christian nation, and there's churches everywhere, and uh, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, it's also a uh, an English-speaking, English-friendly uh, country. Now, and, and leaving the Philippines are going to Thailand, you know, wow, it's, 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 uh, it's a Buddhist country. And the gospel is, is rare. It, it's, it really needs to be evangelized. And uh, it's not so English friendly. You can always find people speak English. But, uh, so it, going was so important for me. And, and about a year ago, I got a call with Skype with Jason, and uh, he says, uh, Pastor Joanna's getting married. And, uh, really? Yeah, she's getting married in November, and she wants you to come. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Well, I, I thought, you know, well, that trip to uh, see Joanna and to be in her wedding, boy, were we in her wedding. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> It grew into, well, while you're here, so uh, we went to the wedding. We'll see that tonight. And then we also visit several uh, ministry points in the Philippines. We'll talk about those. Uh, we were at one, the church where on Monday night, Mary the Baptist Church, and it was celebrating its 12th anniversary. Amen. That's a blessing that, that we were able to be there. And you'll see that. So, and then he said, of course, I want, I want to take you to Thailand. <laughs> and um, so, already, now, Brother Floyd, I, first place, I announced at the church, I just, I wanted someone to go with me. And, uh, you know, I, the leadership of the Lord is impeccable. And uh, I have been praying about it, and Brother Floyd came to me, I would like to go. And you've got to understand, Brother Floyd and Mary, in 2015, uh, when the Sumatras came, Brother Floyd and Mary just opened their arms to them and went to great trouble and expense to help them uh, get their his driver's license. And I mean, Floyd and Mary really invested in them, and I, I could never thank them enough for that. And of course, when you do that, your hearts are knit to them. I mean, they, uh, the Sumatra children adopted them as their grandparents. <laughs> so they immediately picked up some, and that's really good to come to them when they're already grown up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Can't beat that. Cannot beat that. Well, Floyd and Mary have given themselves so much to them. And it just hit me right to think that Floyd could go with me on this trip and uh, it meant a whole lot to the family for Floyd and to be there. And I really appreciate that. And for him to be on the receiving end <laughs> with the Sumatras, he, they gave so much and, and got so close. And now it meant so much for Jason and Priscilla to host us. And, and let me say, as his friend, I'm his pastor, but I'm his friend. And uh, it, I thought, I, it's going to be great to go with Floyd. And I cannot tell you 
what a help it was to me. I couldn't have asked for anyone kinder, thoughtful, serving, uh, just a wonderful ambassador of Rogers Baptist Church. Amen. Everywhere we went, Jason asked Floyd to give his testimony, and he did. In Chiang Mai, when we finally got there, uh, he taught Sunday school. Not only gave his testimony, but taught Sunday school. And then a masterful job. And when, even again, when we're in the, the tribe's church, again, and uh, I just, I could not thank him enough. I told him right up. I said, now, Floyd, hang on, because this is one trip. I said, it's going to be grueling. And uh, the time, you know, a day that you're missing, and uh, half a day or whatever, and so he, he, he did a composite here, and he compliments me so much because I'm not a detailed person, unless maybe it's my sermons, and he's really bad. <laughs> uh, but he is, he's a very detailed person, so we compliment each other uh, in so many ways, and uh, he, he did a, He talked about this trip. We were on, what, six different airlines. <coughs> and uh, we, we flew, flew six different airlines. Uh, 19,805 air miles. Air time, 40 hours and 33 30, 30 minutes. It seemed like 200. <laughs> Uh, we were, when we were on the ground, we traveled 562.4 miles uh, in car. We stayed in nine hotels. <laughs> Not one hotel, more than two nights. Most of them one. <laughs> so we were in, out, in, out, constantly moving. We were in the Philippines for five days. And we were in Thailand or seven. And uh, so it was that kind of trip. And he he did great. I'm the one who left part of myself behind in one of the hotels. I, I kind of know I would, but uh, we, we kind of checked each other that way. And the, now, now listen to this. The exchange rate between uh, the American dollar and, and, and the Philippines peso is like one to 50. And so that worked to our advantage. And uh, so we were able to plus stay, and, and I mean, uh, $30 a night or something when it comes to American money, and of course the food and things like that, but uh, you just had, I told Brother Floyd, says, when he says go, we go. And if it, if, in some of these flights, we were out late at night, uh, getting on the plane and getting in early, those kind of things, and the days were long, weren't they, Floyd? We start every day about about six o'clock and such. So. I can only think of one morning we get up later than that. Six every morning. And with with Jason, <laughs> it, we all we we never knew. Yes. We never knew. Uh, so we're going to move on. What we're going to do tonight is uh, this this trip is in two phases. Philippines up, up front, and then to Thailand. And we're only preoccupying ourselves tonight with what I would call the ministry points, okay? Uh, the places where we, we're not doing the road trip, uh, we're doing the ministry point. So, Brother Floyd, we were first at Blessed Hope Baptist Church. See, we got in on a Saturday morning, and... Uh, <coughs> We, have, we, we dropped in the day before a wedding. Now, you've got to understand about, you know, the Sumatras. I mean, he's the parents of the bride. So he's got enough to do without us. And so uh, we got in that morning, and he, he got, got us something to eat. And he got us something to eat. He wanted us to get into the hotel early. They, they couldn't do that because the rooms were full. And we begged him to leave us at the hotel uh, and uh, so we did. We went to the lobby. We spent quite some time there. People were very, very nice to us. We got up in our room, uh, 
and then he came back for dinner. And uh, then he wanted us to go with him. We told him, no, you've got so much to do. So we went back up. And we, what we were trying to do was to stay up the rest of the night so we could get our hours somewhat straight out. And so we turned on the TV set and watched Philippine basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it was interesting. It was good. Uh, they have professionally. Yeah, they do. And, and uh, we stayed awake until... 8 o'clock, I think. <laughs> 8 or 8.30, something like that. But the next morning, up at 6. Yeah. Up yeah. At six. And, and the first stop was Sunday morning. So we, we ministered Sunday morning. We got in Saturday morning there. We lost all day. I don't know where it went. And we got in uh, Saturday morning. And then Sunday morning, bright and early, off we go <coughs> to uh, Pampanga. And the province of Pampanga and the Blessed Hope uh, Baptist Church, and uh, I'm going to show these phases of what we're going to do. The, what I'm going to show on the slide right now is this is our this is what we did while we were in the Philippines. The first morning, of course, was there at Blessed Hope, and then that afternoon, that evening was the wedding. And then later, uh, the next day on Monday, we went to Maranatha Baptist Church, uh, and the final. Uh, Site that we, we attended the church there in Bethany Baptist Church, uh, actually in Manila, they call it Makati City, but it's actually all merged in together. Yeah, this whole church is right in the neighborhood of where we landed. This is uh, uh, right here where Clark Air Force Base is. And um, we, our first visit was a, a little humble, but now I, we did not plant this church, uh, Blessed Hope Baptist Church. But it's in a uh, it's a it's a rural rural church. Yes. Uh, Florida, um, Florida Blanca. Blanca, Florida Blanca, and uh, brother uh, Floyd got some information about this city uh, or this little town. Um, population is well, it, it's a it's part of a very large area. It's part of a the total area there is sixty seven point seven five miles, and it's. Population 125,000. There's only 1,636 people per square mile. Uh, it is a second class municipality. They, they classify the cities in the Philippines as a uh, class uh, first, second, first, first, second, and third. And the first class gets more government attention, second class gets a little bit less, and then third class gets very little. So we're, we're in the second class community here. Or, or, Province here. Yeah, and the second, you can go ahead and do that. The second class now. Well, by the way, these, these are their, these are their, uh, their they pick up kids. It's, it's a very rural uh, little town, and uh, they pick up children. Uh, had Sunday school that morning, and when we got there, we were greet, greeted, and uh, uh, we were wearing the. Uh, the traditional shirt and uh, <laughs> uh, we're wearing the bra and uh, that was one thing that, that uh, Brother Samaker wanted to make sure was that we were dressed properly when we went so we got the bra and we wore our bra you had to greet the church and, and members and this right here is a pastor uh, of another church uh, that was organized by Rogers Baptist Church we, we initially were to be with him on Tuesday evening and speak there, but that, that didn't work out. So, uh, bless his heart, he was here for us the whole front end of the trip, and it was a real blessing. And the, the children are precious, and um, they began to come in early in the morning, had a Sunday school lesson, um, and then ultimately we had uh, a worship service. First time we've ever been in this church, and uh, it's got a very, very faithful pastor. This gentleman here helps uh, with the music and other aspects of church ministry, and uh, the children were dismissed from Sunday school, and then uh, we all kind of participated in the services that morning, had special music, uh, which was a real blessing. But Jason greeted the people, and... and um, he, he has been in this church before and kind of prepared the way for us. And Brother Floyd 
uh, gave this testimony that morning, and I they set me loose to preach. So yeah. I really enjoyed it. And let me tell you about those people. There's uh, they're so warm, and they just they just you could just feel their hearts right there, and, and they were very respond very responsive. Yes. We had a precious service there. That morning. Yeah. Anything you want to say about this particular setting? Of course, it was uh, it, it was my first time being in the Philippines. Um, you, you, you get there, and you you notice you know the palm tree beside the church. What you notice uh, living in Athens, and they're they're all paying attention to you. Their eyes are looking into your eyes, and, and they're uh, they're happy and proud that you're there. That you can feel the love in their hearts for you, and and the, and the kids were fantastic. But all of them were. They were so cordial and. and it was like being off. It really was. It was, it was really, really great. Okay, the wedding. Uh, I'm not going to show you this first slide first. Uh, we're getting ready to go to the wedding, and, and again, we were trying to. Of course, Brother Jason had never been the father of the bride before. Brother Ron and I had, had experience. The advice we gave him was to stay away from Priscilla as much as possible. <laughs> we really don't know whether he did that or not. But anyway. Uh, we, we were trying to be kind to him. So he was going to leave us someplace. We said, just take us where you go. So he takes us to this place, to the uh, the Grand Palazzo Royal, to the office. He takes us in the office, and we're sitting there and being nice little men, and, and they brought us coffee. They treated us very nice. But he almost forgot we were over there. But I'm going to show you. As soon as we left the services, the last church, Okay, now this is, I want you to look and sense the fact we're not just, I want you to understand that a missionary is a human being. A missionary is a father. A missionary is a family man. And so what we're doing here is we're stopping at Priscilla's mother's house. We're picking her up and some of the girls that are going to be in the wedding. He's changing the car. Uh, around so he can get everybody in there. I mean, this is just the way it is. I could have started showing you the wedding pictures right away. I want to show you. I want you to observe him, the pictures of him as much as you can, and keep in your heart and mind of what he's putting up with right now in his life. I can't get this thing to put. There it goes. Okay, now we're taking the girls to another hotel so that they can go up and help each other get ready and also help the bride to get ready. I'm going to drive from, uh, from where, to and from uh, Florida Blanca. Uh, it, how, how far was that from this uh, church? Uh, right right down. 28 miles. Yeah, 28 miles. So and the, the colors were green. Yes. Yeah, kind green. of a hunter green and gold. Okay, now, I told you he took us over to the office and he kept us in there. Well, we're looking at our watches, and we said, well, the service, the, the wedding starts at 2.30, and it goes on at 2.20. And we would have gone someplace, but we didn't know where to go. <laughs> so all of a sudden, someone comes in and gets us, and so we run in there, and uh, they run over to me, and they put the boot and air on me. And, and I said, uh, I'm not Brother Ron, and they ripped the boot and air off the <laughs> <laughs> So And they put it on Brother Ron, and they push him in line. And then they tell me, you can't go in now. Okay, so I, this is beautiful because what I got were background pictures. They're preparing the bride. All right? Now, these are pictures that you won't see anywhere else. We've got them right here. <laughs> so I'm here, you can see the cuts. This is going to be the, the area where we actually have the meal after the wedding. It's a beautiful, beautiful setting. I was I was a sponsor. My role was to be a sponsor. Now what is that? I've never been a sponsor of a wedding. So they put the boot near on me and put me next to this other female, female sponsor. Now and there's 24. There, there's 12 male and 12 like the four and 20 elders around the throne. <laughs> and so the sponsors come in uh, arm in arm and then break. And it's like the, you know our procession of wedding. And so. Along the aisle where the bride and groom come are, the, are these tables for the dining situation. And the men's table is over here, the women's sponsor table is over here. And so uh, we, we were a very important part of the wedding in that we're, we would probably call them witnesses. 
Did you know that all 24 of us signed the marriage license? Yeah, it's a part of the uh, As witnesses, as legal witnesses. Yeah, absolutely. So I, that's, so I, I knew what I was doing. Was get in line here. Look there. Go. Okay. You sit over there. All right. Just prior to this, Jay, you know Jay, remember Jay, he's a photographer, he's taking pictures, and he's, he's taking a shot of his sister, and he looks through the lens, and he looks above the lens, and he goes, Grandpa! And he puts the camera down and comes to give me a big squeeze. Well, Joanna's getting ready to turn, I said, girl, you don't move, you stay right where you are, we got a wedding to do. So anyway, it was, I had advantages to being where I was, it was good. Standing by the door, as they go in. Uh, as I put this on PowerPoint, it's actually short and, and, and reset some of these pictures, but it, it, it's a beautiful setting. Now they had they had it set up where the sponsors had special seating on each side of the ceremony. Uh -huh. Singers. That's um, yeah. Now, Brother Ron, see Priscilla right here. Yes, Brother Ron was directly in front of me. Brother Ron was blocking the light. If, if, he, had not been, if he had not been where he was, I could not have taken a picture. Okay. Brother Ron could not take any picture. I got no picture. Because Jay had, uh, uh, Jay had set up a big spotlight across from me on the other side of the bride, the other side of the ladies, and it was right in my face. So if I took a picture, all I've got was the sun. <laughs> See the cake? In America, what would you think about that cake? Big cake, right? Okay, we're not going to tell you the real story about this cake. <laughs> this is this is the male the male uh, witnesses or responsible yeah. for the <coughs> There's Jay. I had to get a picture of Jay taking pictures. There's the bride and groom at the cake. What we learned on this was that there's only one little section, very small section, that they actually cut. The rest of that is just the cake. <laughs> Never going. Again, entertainment following the wedding. John Mark. John John Mark was a John Mark. big, big part of this. He had planned this this was John Mark's second wedding like this in two weeks. Um, and he takes care of all the music. He coordinates almost everything there. So in in you know, in addition to his church responsibilities, he's doing this. Uh, this is actually the two fathers together here. It's not, it's not really clear. There's Brother Jason. Now, the, the father of the groom and the father of the bride each got up and, and uh, gave, a, gave a little talk of and, and, uh, what they <coughs> thought about their children. That was a good time to do that. Of course, Brother Jason gets up and he goes right into it. Then the bride and the groom. <coughs> they each they they each had an opportunity to express their love for their parents and a reflection on their parents during that time. We might say that that's Jason, okay? We, we we're talking about the bride. She's a beautiful bride here. Yeah. Jason's a fine young man and uh, very proud and happy little boy. Actually Jason and his parents were a member of a mission. Uh, early on with Brother Samantha. Yeah, and, and Joanna and Jackson grew up together in church, you know, and chased each other around like they did. <laughs> Little did know one day they would meet again. And then she, and she, went to, she went to Singapore. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, she was looking for a job, and she met him. And uh, the Lord met him in Singapore. Now that is Priscilla and her mom and her aunt. <coughs> And you saw the house that we were at, the Greenwood, that's, that's where we were. Oh, something I should point out, which we haven't pointed out. 
The responsibility for all this big thing is for the, the, it's the groom's dad that pays for all this. Hey! Hey! <laughs> what they call a venue. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really nice. And uh, probably was good enough. So uh, we get home like that night, you know, and uh, get up early in the morning and start traveling. And we travel from uh, from, from Florida, Angela Florida. Well, I feel right. well, we actually, we actually leave from Angela City, which is where the world Angela is. City, yes. Yeah, and, 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 and then we're going now to Aguilar, yes. which is uh, 75, about 76 miles away. And in the back seat with Jason driving. Yes. Aren't you glad you're saved? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we noticed, you know, it was Hong Kong, Kong, not two, Hong Kong, Kong, Hong Kong, Kong, Hong Kong, Kong, Kong. Kong. <laughs> And he said, we don't use brakes here. Oh. You know so you drove on the road, sometimes you're driving on the side of the road, you know, the, to get around. And anyway, you're passing all kinds of vehicles. And, uh, we, he I, was in a hurry. He was. We, we had to book it. We did. And we're, we are driving through our rice paddies, and they're harvesting the rice. And what they do in the Philippines is they take an entire lane of traffic and they lay the rice out there to dry. To dry. Not a good deal when Brother Sumatra comes. <laughs> 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 hey, he's really not that bad. You know, I, he had a terrible time. You know, he did not pass his driver's test the first time he took it here <laughs> in Texas because they said he drove too slow. I told him a thousand times while I was there, I wish that examiner was with, with you today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we're catching a lot of fast food. And uh, one of the places uh, that we do visit was uh, Chow King. Chow King. King. And uh, right next to uh, all the food is wonderful. Mm. And so uh, we, we drive and drive and drive to get to Maranatha Baptist Church. This is the last church I think that Brother uh, Sumatra organized there. In the Philippines, this is the 12th year anniversary uh, for this church, and so we're, we're getting there for a service, uh, an anniversary service, a meal, and things like that. So the wedding is behind us now. When we organized this church, and we took the group with us, I think Darren was with us. Uh, Darren, just this uh, lower section uh, was complete. We organized the church right in while the center was here. Uh, they've recently built a second story, and uh, so we're waiting into that now. We're getting there. Uh, about Aguilar, it is a uh, it's a Agu class. It's a, class it's a third class yeah. municipality. Yeah. Population forty one thousand four sixty three. So it's it's agricultural, pretty much. And, uh, and so that's just kind of where Aguilar is. So we've gone from a, a, a second class city that they call it to Aguilar, which is the third. And you say, well, what does that have to do with the church? Well, it has a lot to do with the church. It tells you about you know, the people, what they can afford, what they can't, and, and being able to support ministry and things like that. Uh, so this, this is uh, that. Uh, services are held up on the second floor now. And they had it, it was so very nice up there. Um, John Mark and, and, and uh, the interim pastor have really done a good job in getting it ready for the anniversary. You can see that, that it was it was uh, it was loaded. <laughs> yeah, we got there and I mean they started coming. As it turned out, there were about twenty uh, pastors in the Philippines uh, that came for that evening service. Uh, the theme of it was uh, vessels of honor, and uh, so uh, you can see a lot of the pastors here that running the parish. Uh, look how nice it is. John Mark, just and the church really worked hard to make this nice. This is a back, the whole back side of the church. I'm taking pictures. Uh, PowerPoints, 
Uh, I mean, it, this is a group of young people that sang, and uh, this young lady with them playing the guitar, and boy, were they excellent and well prepared, and uh, it was just a joy to hear them. So we had a lot of good special music that evening. John Mark. Hey, right here. Uh, I mean, when John Mark was with us, uh, he was, while he's in America, he was relaxed. He was resting. Um, Brother Ron and I had, had prayed for Brother John Mark, and we noticed that he was just not John Mark. Even at this point, you have to understand, he's left that wedding now. He's driven the 75 miles to the church and getting ready for the anniversary, and he still looks very stressed. I mean, he doesn't look like the John Mark we know. But, but later on, we, we found our John Mark after all this was over. Yeah, because he had just come from a wedding, and yeah. he had orchestrated him all of this. So he's really pushing it. We had spirits of singing. The one thing that, that I'm so impressed with, and, and we have a video here coming up, but this is their uh, minister of music, and he is, he is he's live. I mean, he, there's never a still moment for him. Yeah. These are the members. This is the core of Maranatha Baptist Church.
saw in the choir? They're a second generation. They're the children. Amen. Amen. They're the children of that generation that we organized with. A lot of their, the, the first generation, are in places now, and, and many of them are working, finding work. You know, here we are. And the, the reason I talked about Aguilar being a third uh, tier city and being poor, well, people have to work, they have to go other places to find jobs. And so, what blessed my heart is to see the second generation taking the place of the first. And that, that is what really, really touched my heart. Find, find young, young adults. John Mark is encouraged because now they have a new president or whatever in the Philippines and he's doing a lot to clean up the growth problem. As Curfew said now, and there's a there's a big difference already uh, there in, in their town. gentleman here is with the, uh, a, a, the uh, Southeast Asia University, a, a Bible college, and they wanted to honor Jason with a, with a uh, honorary doctorate of divinity, um, it, and it really blessed my heart that, um, that they did that. He's a servant. Amen. Now, we know he's a servant over here. He's a servant over there. And in Thailand, if anybody wants anything taken care of, they call Jason. And then to see where he had given so much of his life in the Philippines that they would honor him. Bless my heart. And we were able to be there. And we were able to witness it. So I pray for you. Let me share this, Brother Ron will say a lot. But our pastor received the Life of War honorary doctorate while we were there. Um, and he's very deserving of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any man that studies more than he does and prepares himself for it. Can I say, we were in church at night. 
We were. <laughs> we were. All of it. And now I want you to notice this. This is a table that is spread for the preachers only. This is only the preachers that were there that night. This church, this church has gone out. This is a rural area. They've gone out and they killed their chickens. They killed their goats. Everything that was prepared that night was from their homes, from their grounds. And they prepared. And uh, little did we know until we talked to John Mark after we got to Manila that that night when everyone had eaten, the members went down to eat and there was very little left over for them to eat that night. That's how sacrificial they are. I'm so proud of uh, uh, Maranatha Baptist Church. They were great hosts. Amen. Uh, it, it was gracious. This is a young man uh, that surrendered to preach that was attending. And uh, he traveled with us as we headed uh, toward Manila. And uh, we're to catch a plane there and there go to Bangkok. And so we're having to leave a little earlier than we had on our schedule. This young man is a very fine young man. And, uh, John Mark has made a great investment in him, and so he will be with us as we move south. And uh, John Mark here has three envelopes that were given by a member uh, of the church here uh, to, to bless some people there uh, in Aguilar. And I, I delivered those to John Mark, and I thought that would be more needed to members of the church who needed encouragement uh, in Aguilar, and so he did. So I told him I wanted a picture of him with those, <laughs> and we left those there. So we're going to uh, Bethany. I kept telling uh, Brother Floyd, I said, just wait, just wait till you get Manila. When we hit Manila, we hit downtown Manila at dark <laughs> in traffic. And uh, you got a full dose in the middle of that night, and uh, still shaking. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, it's just, and so this part, right, uh, Brother Floyd, um, this, this church is located in a portion of one of the districts of the world, and is the most densely populated. It is 42nd most densely populated in, in, the, in, that in, in the world. Yeah, in the world, 7,200 yeah. residents per square mile. Hmm. I mean, downtown, and there's a Baptist church there, Bethany Baptist Church. It's in a 12-story building. They're very, and we're here for a Wednesday night. Well, we hit this place, and it's very well-decorated and colorful, and right downtown Manila, and all of these flags here represent countries, around the world where they're sending their mission. And so we sat through uh, a, a lesson, we sat through a message, special music, uh, and see all the churches are there. And uh, boy, I mean, they're top-notch church. Uh, well, well, uh, and the pastor is first teaching here. Noblet, Pastor Noblet, preaching here, uh, teaching the group, and then as we took pictures, it just grew and grew. I had a full house on Wednesday night. I thought, wow. And they got a great media ministry. Uh, I mean, a top notch everywhere and very mission minded. And we were graciously received. Uh, and they had instruments over here. You can't see that, but like instruments over here uh, that were playing for that midweek service. Very gifted church. When they took three offerings. Three offerings Wednesday night. Mm. Two or three offerings. <laughs> anytime something came up, anything was mentioned, the Holy Spirit led, and someone was mentioned that had a need, they had an offering. Mm. He, uh, he also uh, brought us up front, introduced us to the church, and had the members to come by and shake hands with us. We're very encouraged. Yes. Um, great church, great pastor. Also, they had a young man to come forward, uh, candidate for baptism, earlier in the, in the first service, and by the third service, they had him baptized. <laughs> <laughs> no dragging of the feet. Okay, this is up on the deck. This is the top floor of that, sure. of that building. Uh, they have uh, missionaries that live with him 
them in that building uh, as long as a year. They're there uh, and take care of them while they go through their training and, and whatever they need. Uh, they have missionaries all over the world. It, it's, uh, I mean, it, it's constantly moving in Manila. <laughs> And then he would, uh, we couldn't get, we couldn't get rid of him. He said, you know, what you have to do, or what I would love for you to do, is to come out and uh, eat uh, Japanese food. So he took us to a Japanese restaurant. It was very, very, very cordial. Pastor Nobody here, and uh, wonderful meal. And this is late. I, this is probably what time? At night, ten, ten thirty. And, and we're we're getting number two. Get it the <laughs> and it's, it's at this motel that I left something behind. <laughs> when you get up at 2 o'clock, you don't know who you are. <laughs> You're still working through to get jet lag. Yeah. So, uh, so we'll just go to another slide. Right? <laughs> uh, the, weather, the weather conditions were terrible when we got up at 2 o'clock. It was raining. And uh, there had been a discovery while we were inside. They checked the plate number, the license plate number, on uh, Brother Jason's car, and they weren't able to drive it in Manila. They're, they're certainly, whatever you, your last number on your license plate, you're not allowed to drive some, you know, one day a week or whatever. His could not be driven that day, so they had to actually borrow a car for us to drive in. So then John Mark went back the 75 mile, 150 mile round trip to get the other vehicle to help us get to the airport. So they had just gotten back. So they're doing the Manila what them. they have done in Mexico City. And it's really about the pollution. So they, the, the license plates keep some of the half of the cars or whatever, you know. So I know it will pay off because Mexico City is right, I mean, much, much better than it used to be to cut down on the pollution. So there's real changes in the Philippines. You know, our president was here before us and uh, met the new president there in the Philippines. So there's good things happening, okay? Okay, we're in Thailand now. We, we have, uh, here are the addition points. We're going, first of all, to Klong Prim uh, Prison there in Bangkok. Uh, then on Sunday morning, we're going to Life International Baptist Church in Chiang Mai. And then later, we go to the Aka uh, Mai Swa Baptist Church there in the Chiang Mai. So, first of all, it's Klong Prim Prison. Of course, if you, you know we're there because of, uh, of Joseph. Joseph is in prison. Joseph committed murder and he's in prison in Thailand. Uh, we're in a motel right across from the prison. Yes. So we're in walking distance to go over there. These pictures are not, we, would, we were not permitted to take pictures. These or off of the internet. Um, this is an aerial view of Plum Prim Prison. Uh, maximum security prison. Uh, compound houses about 20,000 inmates. Uh, there's actually a boat around it. Uh, the, the men that are there, well, there's men and females separated, of course, there. Uh, those that are there uh, must have a 25-year sentence or less. So what is indicative of is the fact that Joseph uh, has less than 25 years now to serve. This is, this is where we visited. We left everything in our room except our passports. Uh, and we were permitted to go in. Uh, Brother... Sumatra had been to the embassy and got permission for us to visit for two hours. But when he went forward into the prison, they told him that the embassy didn't dictate the hours that they would, they would tell him how many hours or, you know, that we could visit. So we had a 30 minute visit uh, and then they moved Joseph and we went to just around uh, up this corner and we got to visit him for another 30 minutes. Uh, he apologized to us. And I want you to know that he has accepted Christ since he's been in prison. Uh, my first thing of concern, my first question of concern, I got very, very to the point with him. He was very respectful. And I asked him if, 
if he was being hurt there. He's been moved from one prison to this one, and his response to me was he's not being hurt as much at this prison as he was the other. He is a foreigner in the prison. He does not speak Thai language. He doesn't know what they say to him. Um, the conditions that we saw were very clean. I mean, we saw very clean that the, the, the guards uh, didn't seem to be brutal to the ones we saw. But I mean, we had... We had a, had a good visit with him, as much as you can, because you got a, a section of wire here, and then he's back on the other side. They're talking to us through a phone. This is a picture of the inside. Now, this is a cell. It's five feet by ten feet. And you see five mats there. There's five prisoners that sleep in that room. Five feet by ten feet. That's what the facility looks like. I would ask you to pray for him, for Joseph. He, is, he wants to be used in some way for Christ. And uh, he's with us into our lives one day. And yes. And so we pray for him. Pray for uh, the Samakas. Uh, when they go to Chiang Mai, they're 422 miles away from, from this prison. They can catch a bus, and it's a uh, it's a twelve hour or eleven hour one way bus ride, sixty dollars per person round trip. So a round trip for them is twenty two hours. Uh, they usually get there on a Thursday afternoon, visit with him, spend the night, visit with him on Friday morning, catch the bus, and ride back another eleven hours. They only give them thirty minutes. They only give them thirty minutes when they're there, and uh, they can't do that every week. You re you realize that? I mean they're. they're they just can't. And, and so we just need to pray about, about that. They, they can get a flight, the flight that we took from uh, Chiang Mai to ba or from Bangkok to Chiang Mai, uh, $90 a person. Uh, it takes an hour and 15 minutes, but they just can't afford that. But uh, I just wanted you to see that this was definitely a mission point for us because we got to talk to... Uh, to Joseph, most of all, we got to sit out in an area and, uh, and listen to Mom, Priscilla. I, I, you've already noticed that the name of, of the new mission is Life International. Um, I never, we didn't appreciate what the name of it means. Joseph took a life. And Priscilla says, that God has put it on her heart that they will name it Life International because they're going to reach out that those around them will have eternal life. A little bit to explain to you about this is that the family of, of the lady that was murdered has forgiven Joseph and is in fact is given money to him to have him. But the significance of that, of the name for that mission, you know, you can just say Lyme, that's, that's a great name, but it means much more than that. There's much more meaning to it. Life International Baptist Church, Chiang Mai. This is Chiang Mai, which is uh, the northern part of Thailand, and um, <coughs> it is uh, a nice sized city. And there are, what, 300 Buddhist temples in Chiang Mai. Uh, and we have a work there. And we're here on a Sunday morning uh, as we have gotten in. And, and uh, back up just a bit. Okay. And there's the, there is the, the sign that they put out. You got to also understand that uh, ACE has... Uh, reached out to Brother Jason and asked and offered uh, their help for him to get a facility. And they're also using ACE to teach English and with the children. And uh, that whole curriculum is Bible-based. And so uh, that's also a part of their work. They're, they're getting in the city besides this. Uh, this is our church. In the city, well, there, there's a center and a hub here, and they've got another across town that they're attracting students to. So, practice.
pray about that ministry. That they could, they're trying to reach the Thai people. Okay? So, um, and it is the storefront. I mean, it has the garage door that pulls down for protection. It's secure. It will be here right when we leave. It will be given instructions when we leave here this afternoon to leave all of our baggage behind and carry the things that we'll need for two days. I'm kind of frightening if you... <laughs> no, but anyway. The, the, I want you to look. This is an international meeting. People from Australia... Uh, Great Britain. There's a, a couple that are political refugees from Pakistan yes. that are there. Now, the proprietor of this building who owns it attends every Sunday. Amen. He's Buddhist, he's Thai, hmm. but he's, we'll see pictures of him, but uh, there's Taiwanese here, there's people from the UK, Australia, uh, whatever. There was a young man at our hotel uh, from the Philippines, and uh, we, we invited him, and he was there. He got on his motorcycle and okay. rode, us over, rode over with us. And the interesting thing was he had his, had his phone with him, and he uh, videoed my Sunday school lesson, every word of it, and he videoed all of Brother Ron's message. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. He's already been on our Facebook page, Joseph. Beautiful music. They got media, pre recorded music to sing with. Father John is a gracious, gracious host. Had a wonderful job. Okay, this gentleman furnishes, he has a book, he buy, actually collects Bibles and books and he gives the Bibles to the church. Kind of sharing time, special music. Priscilla, through her teaching, is making a lot of contacts, and uh, that's reflected uh, of people that are attending right now. Here in the Let me say this right quick. Uh, we're we're going to try to wrap this up. But when we got the wedding behind us, and you know, we we, we went to our places. We had those Monday night church in, in, in Manila. When, when we started the last, that second wave in Thailand. Jason became just like a kid. And I told you earlier that it's so important that I go visit. He was so excited to show us this work. He was so excited to show us Thailand. Wasn't he? I mean, yes. it, it, it was just so Jim. We really had fun in Thailand. He was, he was just so happy. Of course, I know you got the burden of the wedding behind you, but my goodness, he, his heart is here. And Priscilla. Yeah. Doing a great work. That sitting with Priscilla there in the front of that prison, she shares the burdens of her heart about Joseph, and then within a blink of an eye, she's telling you about how God's <coughs> using her through the teaching and how how she's in love with those that she's contacting and how God's using her. And it, it's amazing. So when, when the services were over, uh, True Baptist form, they had a feed. Uh, everybody had brought in international food. <laughs> this was another thing with Brother Samaka. Brother Samaka, I mean, he coordinates everything. And, 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 the, and the day before, he was contacting people and asking them and making sure that there was enough food there for us. This is the school of upstairs. High Bible. These are the acute uh, studying places for the ACE school. The uh, the proprietor, the one on but his son is in that creek. Yes. Yeah. 
we're, this is, now we're going north, right? We're, we're, this is, we had lunch, it's still Sunday. So we've got to, we've got to drive uh, fast north and further north to a tribal church. This is the same day, and we're speaking here. And they're, they're holding their services for us. It's in Mae Swai, which is in the Chiang Rai province. Uh, this is the Aka tribe. Uh, the, uh, the thing to understand here is this property is being rented by Brother Sumatra out of his support. support. The, these first pictures will show you is that when they are there, uh, they have facilities that they built in for them to spend the night. And so that's, that's what these were showing you here. It has a refrigerator, storage area, place to sleep, and place to hang their clothes, but that's on the, the side of it. They're renting that facility. The Aka pastor is is living there, and he has taken in a lot of uh, children that were just thrown out. Uh, they don't know how, they don't know when they were born. Uh, that's commonplace with the Aka people uh, there in Thailand. But it is, it's a beautiful I want you to notice Brother Ron at work here. If you've ever, if you've never been on the mission field with Brother Ron, you've missed a lot. <laughs> Brother Ron, watch. See that? Brother Ron makes everyone feel like they're loved. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. There's the family. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8, in, in the uh, Aka language and in Thai. Yeah. This is the uh, Aka Bible. So they, they probably has the Bible in their own language. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had the pastor's daughter who read the text. I didn't go to read my text, so when I came to the text, the pastor would point to his daughter, and she would read the text in their language. And then they had their own song books. Yeah. And they all sang wonderful yes. words. Yes. culture in Thailand, the, these tribal people are the ones who are your waiter at the, at the you know, they're the, they do the domestic work, mow the lawns, they're, and they're looked down upon by the Thai people. They just are. They, they're we began, we began to spot them when we went back in town. I said, she, is she up? <laughs> and, and we would give them hugs or we would talk to them. But every Sunday, our missionary, they have a work in Chiang Mai, and they drive north, for about two or three hours, and then they have services here, and they spend the night here, every Sunday. And so we have two works. Yes. And this, this is convenient for the Aka tribe people because they work, and so the evening works better for them than a morning service would. Uh, the Aka the Aka farmers are known for raising rice, corn, and soybeans. Uh, they're, they're considered to be experts, and and they're being you know they're used in the field and they're used to do jobs that usually no one else will do. And, and uh, I want you to notice here, uh, looking at Priscilla. You know she was bending over in one of those slides. <coughs> what she's doing is picking up a Bible. And, and uh, she's, she's beginning to talk to the young man beside her about the time. Gave my testimony. Brother Ron, uh, Brother uh, Jason is up there. And then Brother Ron coming. And I'm, actually, this is a video. I want you to listen to some of the interpreting. We, we don't really need to do this. Okay. Yeah. So, as a guy, you know, God, and Miss Hall, Jim, and you do 
that in the United States. What the world calls love is but shallow emotion. And I see all the broken relationships and I think, is this love? Will God you know guys I joy that? <laughs> Give you some idea. I mean, it, it, and, and in that, whenever Brother Ron would mention a scripture, he would repeat it in his language. His daughter would open the Bible and she would read it. And so we have a recording, a video of that actually. Uh, but we didn't, we don't have it on this. But it was a beautiful, beautiful sermon. <laughs> that is a traditional Aka uh, shirt that he's wearing. I told him that if he played the guitar like that, he could be in the office of person. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably heard of it. When we left, we noticed before we left, when we got there, that, that Priscilla had unpacked some food that she brought in for them. They wanted us to stay and eat with them. Uh, we just didn't have the time. Uh, so there's some opportunity to move on. Okay, that that is that. If you'll put on the uh, the other special little powerful one, um, go ahead. These kids here, our benevolence ministry, uh, we might be using our benevolence ministry in the future, maybe to help some of these kids. They're, they're, they're kind of orphans in a lot of ways, and so maybe some of them need to be help. We went to the Thailand elephant painting. So when you when you uh, go to Thailand and you think elephant and you think that orchids or orchids are beautiful and uh, so we went this is uh, and I'm not lying they paint and we had a lot of different elephants each painting their own picture they would place the brush you know and they would be very exact. And uh, their, their paintings, well, this one here ends up being a tree. And we'll, we'll have a finished picture. It's amazing. Watch it.
and there are seven, there are over 70 elephants here. Uh, we saw elephants uh, from seven weeks old. We went up to the nursery and saw seven week old. And with the, we rode one, 42 years old, and they said the oldest one in the compound, or the, I call it the camp, was uh, 91 years old. Church, I want to thank you and Brother Ron for uh, giving me the opportunity to go. Uh, we just touched the tip of the iceberg, really. Uh, just thank you. That's all I can say. Do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Um, we, um, yes, Brother Ed. Language, I, I know you have some interpreters, but generally, uh, place to place you're going to eat, how was the uh, English? Well, in the Philippines, it was all English. It was all good. It was, everybody was just so good with that. In Thailand, well, in the Sunday morning setting, I spoke in English. We didn't have any translators. Uh, but here in the uh, tribal, they, 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 we did, I didn't speak with the translator. He, he knows English, and he also knows Thai in his own language, Aka language. So that's the way it was there. One, one thing we learned in Thailand, they have a sign that says foreigners. You know, Brother Ron and I could never get by being a Thai, right? So we're always in the foreigner line. Well, they charge you more if you're in the foreigner line. <laughs> Not like America, right? Uh, but they were, you know, all in all, the people in Thailand, we, uh, when you got ready to check out of the room, they would send someone up to check your room. And I had left my shaving kit behind. And a little girl was trying to communicate with me about my shaving kit. And she would say something, and then it was like this. And it, that's the way they, that's the way they respond to you. And uh, so here I am, I, you know, I waited and I got the shaving kit, and now I've got a shaving kit, so I've got a shaving kit like this, <laughs> here, like, you know, taking her, but they were very, very, very nice to us in the hotels. The only places that we found where, where anyone was rude to us was in the temples, um, and we understand that it may have been because there was a couple of Americans there a few days before we were, and they had uh, mooned one of the Buddhas. Huh. And then had gone to the airport and got caught at the airport. So that might have been part of it. I don't know. But, but all in all, I mean, it was, it was just a wonderful trip. A wonderful trip. Uh, one thing that the, the good thing about the Thai culture, they have reverence and respect for mm -hmm. people in authorities. And they still have reverence and respect for those in religious authorities. 